count of Abel and Cain, and looks like we're we're recording. So go ahead with what you're talking about, um, or you were going to share. All right. Um, yeah. What what happened? What went wrong? Was that Cain, being the firstborn, he was a candidate to perhaps restore Eden, to restore the Axis Mundi. And he was being trained along those lines because he was a, he was a, he worked in the field and he tilled the ground. And that's what Adam did in the garden. Whereas Abel worked with the flocks. But when they both turned 13 and came of age, and it came time for them to present their own sacrifices to the Lord, I assume Adam would have taken care of their worship as, as the father before that time. But when they brought their sacrifices, God accepted Abel's and not Cain's. And Cain didn't know quite how to take that. He was upset. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother, Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And what this means is, if thou doest well, this means if he secures his own proper sacrifice and does it, then he'll be accepted. And he said, if thou doest not well, if he can't secure the proper sacrifice, then sin lieth at the door, a sin offering lieth at the door. God will provide. And it's similar to Genesis 22, when God provides for Abraham. And Abraham even names the place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. Anyway, here, if he can't secure the proper sacrifice by talking with his brother and getting the lamb, then a sin offering lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. That means Cain indeed will uh, achieve what a firstborn is supposed to and uh, restore. And in this case, you know, he would be the one to inherit the responsibility of restoring the Axis Mundi, restoring Eden. And uh, so Cain didn't get the proper sacrifice from his brother. Neither did he get the sacrifice the Lord would have provided. Instead, he killed his brother, and that's just the wrong thing to do. He, so Abel can't restore the garden, but Cain doing this got kicked out and can't, in fact, part of his punishment is that he can no longer grow things. When he would try to grow in Eden, nothing happening. So he had to leave Eden. That's why he left and he built a city and successfully thrived outside Eden, but uh, he was kicked out and he thought, if these people groups that know about the garden are experiencing its blessings, and like in the old Sumerian legends, we know that they knew about the garden. They, it's the, the old cedar fort forest, the cedar forest, they call it and stuff. And uh, other cultures knew about paradise. And uh, that's, that's the whole problem, though. So when Cain had to leave, cross the Jordan into the wilderness, into wandering, to nod, uh, he was afraid that they would kill him. So God set a mark on him and then said, anyone that kills Cain, I'll avenge it sevenfold. He didn't say that to Adam and Eve, you know, 
that's just so it doesn't make any sense so he's protecting him as he goes out into the dangerous world you know that's what it means yeah and it, and scholars have connected it to the clan mark that would protect a man out you know in dangerous areas because anyone that saw that mark knew there was a clan behind that guy so if you attack that guy there's a whole clan that's going to come looking for you, you know, and that's the idea there. So he had a mark from the Lord that he's protected of the Lord, I guess. It seems um, just when you, I think a lot of readers might be kind of passing by the significance of that mark or like the significance of why he wanted to stay alive. But I agree. Like, um, it would be really silly to put a mark on his head if Adam and Eve were the only ones alive. Um, yeah. He, did he like have the foresight that oh maybe Adam and Eve's you know you know through Seth for instance like would eventually kill him or something? But like, why have a mark if nothing else will kill you? And I think um, well, well the reason why is because there were other groups around that wanted to. And why would they want to kill him? It's because he, as you said. Um, uh, ruined the chance to restore Eden, the Axis Mundi. So there yep. is like, you know, why did he have the mark? Well, that question's answered. And then why would he want to be killed? You know, that question's answered too. Mm -hmm. um, and really that can only be answered if you understand the significance of Eden and you understand that there must have been some sort of mankind, large group of mankind around that area um, besides Adam and Eve. Yeah. There's another issue that's solved there, too, once you just look at it, right? And that is people have noticed that God says uh, a, uh, a wanderer and a vagabond you'll be in the earth. And then in the next verse, he builds a city. And it's like, well, he did just fine. He built a city and thrived, right? So I guess he wasn't a wanderer and a vagabond. But when you read it correctly... In the Eretz, it it means that he's lost the ability to farm well in Eden. It's only in Eden. It's in Eretz, Eden. So that's another thing that's kind of cleared up. Have you ever noticed that? Honestly, I, I did not notice that. That's really interesting. How like he, uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> at the first part, it sounds like he's, going to be unsuccessful but then builds a city that's that's a contradiction right yeah i've seen that brought up before and it came to pass when they were in the field that cain rose up against abel his brother and slew him and the lord said unto cain where is abel my brother and he said i know not am i my brother's keeper and he said what hast thou done? The voice of my brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And uh, that's verse 12. There's that and, word earth again. That yeah. Word. See, yeah. it's all it's the Eretz, though. It's always... It, and when it's whenever you see just the Eretz mentioned, it's Eretz Eden. 